Hi guys! Welcome sa NG Nerd Math Channel. Sa video na to ay tuturo ko sa inyo ang phasor relationships for circuit elements and impedance and admittance. So kung gusto nyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so this time, ay ituturo ko naman sa inyo yung phasor relationships for circuit elements as well as yung impedance and admittance. So, meron na akong naunang video about introduction to AC circuits as well as phasors. So, kung hindi pa napapanood, ay link ko na lang para ma-check nyo kasi gagamitin din natin yung mga concepts na natutunan natin doon dito sa video na to. Okay? So, ngayon, pag-aaralan natin kung ano ba yung phasor relationships ng circuit elements such as inductor, capacitor, resistor yung voltage shot current nila okay? so sabi, now that we know how to represent a voltage or current in the phasor or frequency domain we can now proceed to how we can apply this to circuits involving the passive elements resistor, inductor, and capacitor okay, so yun na nga dahil alam na natin yung concept ng phasor or pagkatransform ng voltage or current in frequency domain or phasor form nga, pwede na nating alamin kung saan ba yung application nito dito sa ating passive elements, resistor, inductor, and capacitor when relating the current flowing through them and the voltage trap across them. Okay? So, magsimula tayo sa resistor. So, assuming na meron tayong current I, so, in sinusoid form, let's say it is equal to I sub M cosine omega t plus phi. So, ito yung general form natin for the sinusoid in time domain, right? So, para makuha natin yung voltage across this resistor is using ohms ko lang. So, diba? Formula for ohms ko is V is equal to IR, right? So, therefore, the voltage in time domain for the resistor V is equal to yung current na dumadali sa kanya times yung resistance niya na R. So, substitute lang natin itong I na representation natin for sinusoid, we have I sub M cosine omega T plus V times R. Or, idikit ko na lang dito sa magnitude nung ating current. So, therefore, V is equal to R times I sub M cosine omega T plus V. So, in phasor form, ito naman yung magiging form niya. V is equal to I R. So, parang itatransform mo lang itong current I into phasor form. So, di ba, equal siya sa Capital I is equal to yung magnitude niya na I sub M, then bar angle kung ano yung phase angle na phi. Okay? Same as ito sa V, bali magiging, ganun lang din, V is equal to this time R times I sub M angle phi. Kasi ito yung magnitude niya, diba? R I sub M. So, mapapansin nyo, pareho ng phase angle itong V tsaka I. Kasi nga, resistor lang yung ating passive element, right? So, masasabi natin na in phase yung current sa voltage when we have a resistive element, okay? So, pag in natin siya, we have current is in phase with voltage. So, let's say ito yung ating current I with phase angle phi, and then ito naman yung ating current V at same phase angle na phi. So, imaginary versus real. So, so mapapansin nyo, naglalay sila sa isang line kasi nga in phase sila, Okay? Next, we have the inductor. Okay, so let's say, meron ulit tayong current na dumadalay sa inductor in time domain na I is equal to I sub M cosine omega T plus V. So, meron tayong formula for the voltage drop across the inductor given its inductance sa kayong kanyang current which is ito yung V is equal to L di over dt. So, pag sinapsitit natin ngayon yung derivative ng I with respect to T, so, i-derivative natin to, right? Anong derivative niyan? L times I M negative sine omega T plus V times omega or omega L I sub M negative sine omega T plus V. So, para maging standard form siya na kapareho nitong sinusoid form nung I natin na cosine, positive cosine, pag transform natin ito, kailangan nating mag-add ng 90 degree. Base din sa video ka about phasor form, right? So, magiging equal siya sa 
positive na omega L I sub M cosine omega T plus phi plus 90 degree. Okay? So, ito yung relationship ng ating voltage at current kapag meron tayong inductor. So, mapapansin nyo, nagkaroon ng plus 90 degree doon sa phase ng ating voltage kasi doon sa current natin is phi lang, right? So, ibig sabihin, naglilid ng 90 degree yung voltage sa current kapag meron tayong inductor. Okay, so tandaan nyo yan, ha? So, ito yung time domain. Kapag phasor domain naman, apply din natin yung natutunan natin dun sa video ko about phasor. So, di ba kapag dinerivative natin yung current, tapos, tinansform natin into phasor form, anong ginagawa natin? Nagmumultiply lang tayo ng J omega, right? So, therefore, the voltage is equal to, so yung L, times, pag dinerivative nga natin itong di over dt, magiging J omega, then magiging phasor form nyo na na I. So, parang ito yon V is equal to J omega L times I. So, ito yung phasor domain relationship ng current at voltage sa inductor. And then, kapag dinraw na nga natin yung graph, so, imaginary versus real, so, let's say, ito yung ating uh, current I, yung pula, with phase angle phi. Okay? Tapos, kung mapapansin nyo, ito yung V, which is 90 degree ahead of ating current. Kasi nga, nagkaroon tayo ng plus 90 degree or leads yung voltage sa ating current ng 90 degree according dito sa na-derive nating time domain equation. Okay, so therefore, ito yung phase or relationship natin for inductor. Next, we have the capacitor. So, this time, let's say meron tayong voltage drop across the capacitor in time domain as V sub M cosine omega T plus V. Okay? So, makukuha natin yung current dito sa capacitor in time domain using the formula I is equal to C dV dt. Okay? So, substitute natin, we have C times derivative natin itong V sub M cosine omega T plus V. So, parang lang din dun sa kanina. So, magiging negative V sub M sine omega T plus V times omega. Chain rule. Or equal sa negative omega C V sub M sine omega T plus V. So, para maging katulad siya in terms of cosine ng voltage, gawin din natin yung ginawa natin sa taas. So, magiging positive siya. Kaso, mag a tayo sa cosine omega T ng plus 90 degree. Okay? So, therefore, ito yung time domain relationship ng current at voltage kapag meron tayong kapasitor. So, this time, mapansin nyo, yung current naman is naglilid sa kapasitor by 90 degree. Kasi nagkaroon tayo ng plus 90 degree doon sa sinusoid form ng current natin sa kapasitor. Okay? And then, para naman doon sa phasor domain, same lang din. So, ba diba, magdi-derivative tayo ng voltage dito sa formula natin for I. I is equal to C dV dt. So, therefore, imumultiply natin yung phasor domain ng voltage sa J omega din. So, therefore, we have C times J omega V. So, parang ito siya, right? Phasor domain relationship. Now, pag ginrap natin, let's say ito naman si V yung green with certain phase angle phi, dapat ang phase difference nila is 90 degree. Ahead kasi si current ng 90 degree or current leads voltage by 90 degree base dito sa nabuo nating equation sa time domain representation nila. Okay? So, ngayong alam na natin yung different phasor relationships for different passive elements like resistors, capacitors, and inductors, pwede na nating malaman yung impedances at admittances nila. So, ano ba yung impedance sa kaadmitan? So, sabi, yung impedance Z of a circuit is the ratio of the phasor voltage V to the phasor current I measured in ohms. Tapos, yung admittance Y is the reciprocal of impedance measured in Siemens or S. So, itong impedance formula, binasa lang din siya sa Ohm's Law. So, di ba sa DC, meron tayong V is equal to IR. Now, dito naman sa AC, pwede tayong magkaroon ng impedance using Ohm's Law na V is equal to IZ. Okay, so pag din-divide natin both sides by I, 
makukuha natin na yung Z nga is equal to V over I. Ratio ng phasor voltage sa phasor current. Tapos measured itong impedance in ohms. Okay? Itong admittance naman, Y, reciprocal lang siya ng ating impedance. So, parang siya yung naman yung conductance sa ating DC. Pag kinuha natin yung admittance Y, reciprocal lang natin to. Bale, ratio ng I to P or 1 over C. Tapos yung Siemens, yung kanyang unit of measure. So, paano na lang na-derive yung mga ganitong impedances sa capacitor, inductor, and resistor? Base lang din dun sa na-derive nating phasor relationship doon sa capacitor, inductor, and resistor kanina. So, for example, yung impedance natin for resistor is R. Bakit? Kasi, di ba, yung phasor relationship natin sa resistor is capital V is equal to IR. So, pag divide natin both sides by I, masasolve natin yung impedance Z nung resistor as V over I is equal to R. Right? Same as dito sa inductor. So, di ba sa inductor, we have we have V is equal to J omega L I. So, divide on both sides by I, makukuha natin si Z as V over I or, or equal siya sa J omega L. Right? Lastly, sa capacitor naman, we have the relationship of I is equal to J omega C V, right? So, pag divide natin both sides by V, we have I over V is equal to J omega C. Kaso, kailangan i-reciprocal natin kasi ano to? Conductance sa, so, diba? So, pag i-reciprocal natin, V over I, impedance na siya. So, dapat i-reciprocal din natin tong J omega C. So, 1 over J omega C. So, kaya ito. Okay? And then, yung admittance, yung reciprocal lang din ng corresponding impedances itong resistor, inductor, capacitor. Kaya na-derive natin tong tatlo. Okay? Now, as a complex number, yung impedance Z, pwede natin isulat as equal siya sa R is equal to R plus minus JX in rectangular form, right? Where R is the resistance and X is the reactance. So, yung R natin, siya yung Uh, resistor natin dun sa circuit. Kapag naman reactant, siya yung impedance or uh, resistance ng ating mga inductor or capacitor sa circuit. So, meron tayong dalawang case. So, if Z is equal to R plus JX, ibig sabihin meron tayong inductive or lagging circuit since current lags voltage. So, base dun sa karakteristik kanina ng inductor, right? Current lags voltage by 90 degree. Tapos, if Z is equal to R minus JX naman, capacitive or leading, since current leads voltage. Okay? So, kaya negative si capacitor, kasi ba diba, ang formula niya kanina is 1 over J omega C. E yung 1 over J equal siya saan? Negative J, right? So, parang equal din to sa negative J, 1 over omega C. So, kaya kapag capacitor, negative J. Kapag inductor, positive J kasi... J omega lang naman siya, di ba? So, pwede natin isulat sa polar form itong ating impedance. So, Z is equal to absolute value of Z ingle theta in polar form. So, itong absolute value of Z, siya yung magnitude. And then, itong theta, siya yung phase ingle. So, pwede naman tayong gumamit ng calcio dito kapag nagsasolve tayo ng polar form ng impedance. Okay? Tapos, para makuha natin yung real part ng ating impedance na R, Apply lang natin yung formula din natin sa complex number. Yung absolute value of Z times cosine theta, tapos yung reactance naman, absolute value of Z times sine theta naman. Okay? Then, yung theta is equal to arctan of X over R. Then, Z is equal to square root of R squared plus X squared. Kasi pag din draw natin yung impedance triangle, so, ito si R, ito si X. Tapos, ito si Z. Tapos, ito si Theta. So, therefore, na-derive natin itong mga relationship na to. Okay? Now, for admittance naman, di ba admittance Y is equal to 1 over Z or current over voltage? So, pwede rin natin siyang i-represent as a complex number in the form Y is equal to G plus JB. This time, yung G, siya yung conductance, tapos B, siya yung susceptance. So, itong conductance, siya yung uh, conductance ng resistor natin sa circuit. Tapos, yung susceptance, siya yung, uh, react, siya yung resistance ng ating mga capacitor or inductor sa circuit. So, kung i-equate natin yung formula for 
the admittance na G plus JB doon sa formula natin for impedance na R plus JX. So, di ba 1 over Z dapat. So, kaya 1 over Z or 1 over R plus JX. Makukuha natin yung relationship ng conductance in terms of resistance saka reactance ng ating impedance. So, yung G is equal to R over R squared plus X squared and B or yung susceptance is equal to negative X over R squared plus X squared. So, ito yung derivation. Nirationalize lang yung complex number natin. So, para ma-apply yung mga concepts at formula na discuss natin so far is mag-solve tayo ng sample problems. So, for the first one, we have the voltage V is equal to 12 cosine 50T plus 25 degree is applied to a 4 ohm resistor. Find the steady state current through the resistor. So, diba, V is equal to IR in time domain. So, therefore, V over R is equal to I. So, substitute lang natin yung given V na 12 cosine 50T plus 25 degree divided by yung resistance na given na 4 ohm. So, ilan to? 12 divided by 4 lang, right? Magiging 3 times cosine 50T plus 25 degree current. So, amp. So, ito si I. Okay, so same sila ng phase angle, 25-25 pa rin kasi resistor nga yung kinoconsider natin. So, in phase yung current at voltage. Ang nabago lang is yung magnitude. Na-divide 4 lang kasi nga yung resistance natin is 4. Okay? Next, we have the voltage V is equal to 12 cosine 60T plus 45 degree is applied to a 0 0.1 Henry inductor. Find the steady state current through the inductor. Okay, so diba may formula tayo for the inductor in phasor domain as V is equal to J omega L times I. So therefore, para masolve natin si I, we have V divided by J omega L. Okay? So itatransfer muna natin lahat ng ating voltage or current na given into phasor form para madali nating masolve yung problem. So, gamitin nga natin itong formula na to. So, transform natin itong V in time domain into phasor form. So, yung magnitude niya na 12, then angle, kung ano yung phase angle niya, 45 degree. So, 12 angle, 45 degree, divided by J omega. Ano si omega? So, di ba, ang form natin ng sinusoid is V sub M cosine omega T plus V. So, yung omega naka times sa T, which is 60. So, therefore, multiply natin sa 60 and then yung L na given na 0 0.1 Henry. So, ilan to? 12 angle 45 degree divided by 60 times 0 0.1 is 6. So, parang J6. Okay? So, pwede nyo na itong idirekta, i-compute sa calcute. Madi-divide naman yun sa calcute. Pag ginawa nyo yun, ang sagot, in polar form, ha? 2 angle negative 45 degree amps. Right? So, dapat alam nyo talaga yung operations ng complex number, ha? Pati mag-compute nito sa calcio kasi gagamitin natin yun from now on sa mga circuit natin sa AC. Okay, so naturo ko naman yun. So, check nyo na lang yung complex number playlist ko sa, sa advanced math videos ko. Okay? So, therefore, in polar form pa lang tayo. So, ibalik natin into time domain kasi given natin is time domain, right? So, therefore, I is equal to so, yung 2, siya yung magnitude ng ating current. So, 2 and then cosine, same lang din dapat na 60T, then minus 45 degree, yung phase angle natin, amps. So, therefore, this is the final answer. Okay? Next, we have, if voltage V is equal to 10 cosine 100T plus 30 degree is applied to a 50 microfarad capacitor, calculate the current to the capacitor. Okay, so since capacitor naman tayo, pwede natin gamitin yung formula natin for the capacitor as I is equal to J omega CV where yung I at V is in phasor form. 
So therefore, itatransform uli natin itong V into its phasor form. So yung magnitude nyo na 10, and then angle, yung face angle nya na 30 degree. So substitute natin lahat nung given. So J times omega, so this time ang omega natin is, di ba kanina yun yung nakamultiply sa T. So therefore, 100. And then C, so 50 microfarad. So 50 times 10 raised to negative 6, right? And then yung V natin na 10 angle 30 degree. So again, gamit lang kayo ng calcu para masolve natin to. In polar form, we have 0 0.05 angle 120 degree, right? So kailangan natin i-transform into time domain para same sila ng voltage we have. I is equal to, so itong magnitude, 0 0.05, and then cosine then dapat 100T, then yung face angle niya na plus 120 degree amps. Okay, so therefore, this is the final answer. Next, we have, find V of T and I of T in the circuit shown. Okay, so meron tayong circuit na series resistor lang tsaka capacitor with a voltage source. So, since nga, AC na tayo, i-transform natin lahat ng circuit elements as phase source. So, itong Vs, pwede natin gawing complex number in polar form as yung magnitude nyo na 10, then wala siyang phase angle, right? Kasi 0. So, lagay nyo lang angle 0. Okay? And then, itong mga passive element, dapat i-transform natin into their impedance form. So, sa resistor, Kung ano lang yung resistance niya, di ba? Base dun sa formula kanina. So, ito na siya. Dito sa capacitor, meron tayong formula. Z is equal to, so Z for the capacitor is 1, 1 over J omega C. So, substitute natin. 1 over J omega is kung ano yung nakamultiply sa T natin dun sa cosine, which is 4. Yun yung rad per second, right? So, therefore, times 4. And then, yung ating... Uh, kapasitans na 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. So, using calculator, ilan to? Negative 2.5 J ohms. Okay? So, ngayon, pag transform na natin, so, copy ko, papalitan ko na yung mga values. So, gagawin ko na tong 10 angle 0 degree volts and then itong resistor, same lang na 5 ohm. Tapos itong kapasitor, gawin kong negative J2.5 ohm. Okay? So, ito na ngayon yung kukomputin nating mga values. Hanapin daw natin yung current I. Tsaka yung voltage V sa kapasitor. So, para magawa yun, itong I in phasor form, equal siya saan? So, I is equal to voltage over impedance, right? Pero dapat, i-add natin para makuha natin yung total impedance ng circuit. So, we have V is 10 angle 0 degree over so volts to. So, add natin yung 5 ohm tsaka negative J 2.5 ohm. So, impedance niya is 5 minus J 2.5 ohms, right? Kasi nga, ba yung impedance natin is a complex number. Consist siya ng real tsaka imaginary part. So, substitute natin dito. 5 minus J 2.5 So ito, pero yung masolve to sa calc input nyo lang to sa calc in complex mode makukuha nyo yung sagot as what? Convert natin yung sagot sa polar ha? equal to sa 1.789 angle 26.57 degree amps So, pag transform natin into time domain equal sa saan? I of T is equal to Yung magnitude na 1.789, then dapat cosine 40 din. So, times cosine 40 plus yung kanyang face angle na 26.57 degree amp. Okay, so si V of T na lang. So, para masolve si V of T, anong gagawin natin? Ohm's law. So, V is equal to IZ. So, nakuha na natin si I, right? na 1.789 angle 26.57 degree. And then, yung impedance nga natin doon sa kapasitor is negative J.25. So, substitute na lang natin. So, yung I, 1.789 angle 26.57 degree times negative J 
2.5 ohm. So, gamit na lang ulit tayo ng calcu para masolve to. In polar form ulit, equal siya saan? 4.47 angle, negative 63.43 degree volts. Okay? So, pag transform natin ulit into time domain, V of T is equal to yung magnitude nyo na 4.47 and then cosine 40 din then yung phase angle nga na minus 63.43 degree volts so therefore this is the final answer for V of T and this is the final answer for I of T okay okay so I think that's it for this video phase relationships of circuit elements and impedance and admittance So, pag-aralan nyo lang mabuti yung complex number kasi gamit na gamit talaga yan dito sa AC circuits. Okay? So, sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panonood.